high. <laughs> okay, Tom Tom. Yeah, we bad boy. Well, basically, um, I was gonna. Um, well, no, I read a piece out, uh, a science fiction piece, uh, for the 4th of May, um, which was uh, my mobile. Yes, I know, Tom, Tom. Um, And I wasn't really happy with it. Come on, Tom, get, get come on. Uh, I kind of watched it. Tommy, no. No. Tommy, sit. Tommy, no. Uh, yeah, well, you know. I think I might read this in two parts, actually, I'm thinking. Um, no, no, Tom, Tom, no. <sighs> what happens when you have a spoiled dog, you know? Anyway, yeah, I wasn't really happy uh, with the piece I did, uh, so I've reworked it, basically. Um, and who knows, I might rework it again in the future, but I think I'm uh, sort of happy with it now. Uh, and it's a nice science fiction piece, uh, and it's called The Invasion No One Knew About. There were two aliens called Podanita and Orgut. They were greedy and jealous of Earth. They looked upon her beautiful sight as if to pick an apple and take a bite. Teeth marks and a chunk can be seen from space. The two aliens laugh as they spit out bits of apple earth where they are, where they care not for her worth. Podanita said, the contact of the enlightenment proved to be successful. We have in Infiltrated the mind. Orgut flickered his twitch, a muscular face spasm. Do you think they know? Podanita's smirk of a pale, sickly clown. No, I have implemented dissociative conversion disorder. They will construct for us. <laughs> And as she was thinking, she had a frown and continued, They think it's good. Orgut gurgles, <laughs> Am I green? Podanita communicated through electromagnetic fields, filling Orgut's head with, No, let's be grey. Green is a cliché. It was their early representations that they gave us, as if slime or mucus, a discharge of toxic bright lime. Its odour is so thick and dense that you can see the actual smell rising from us. Orgut nods. What shall we look like, as in form? Podanita's eyes grew bright like a bulb before it blew. Yes, indeed, we have to have some form for them. The colour grey on its own would be as if to open a tin of paint and to pour us out as a liquid form, and that won't do. Orgut shrills high. I will get my paintbrush and we can see what designs we can come up with. This conflict, this fixation, dramatised and hypnotised with an obvious disguise. Orgut perceives to foresee for something comfortable, and he said, we can amalgamate our ugliness with beauty. The humans love beauty in the beast. 
He throws quick, sudden blasts of light and continued. How about pink, furry and cuddly? Podanita coughs out smoke. Don't be absurd. <coughs> now Orgut, glitching like an 80s keyboard that lights up, flicking from one key to another. Och, I wanted to be a pink teddy bear. And so it came to pass that the two aliens could not agree. As they argued, their form kept changing. Podanita dulls and swirls like a whirlpool. This design is better. Look, see, I have given us long antennas. Orgut threw, flew through her whirlpool and said, No, no, no. I thought you said you wanted to keep away from a cliché. I mean, no offence, but that's crap. Podanita is in deep red, fuzzed and blurred. What? From the alien that wanted to be a pink teddy bear? Orgut snapped. That was a disguise. Anyway. I have changed my mind. I want to be some kind of robot. Podanita sharpens into a point. Oh, dead original. How long did you think about that one? And so, as the two aliens continue to argue that the sci science fiction films in the world kept changing, in conjunction to what they were thinking. From the blob to Terminator, from Event Horizon to Independence Day, the War of the Worlds to Fire in the Sky, the Fourth Kind to Matrix, 1984 to the Judgment Bureau, Signal to Body Snatchers, Saturn V to the Day the World Stood Still. Meanwhile, on Earth, a boy recites a lament. I ambambulate without the belief in fate. I am scattered like the refractured light, dancing the nervous electrons and photons, yet fill and evenly distribute this angered heat of bright flamed energy. Oh, but this permute, in subtle dimming, tint by tint, tone by tone. With my countenance complexion filling the moon, O oh, moonlit face, if I should be so lucky to have a tranquil look, Of a night angel's blue white, with a watchful sight, Do you see a twinkle? A star in my eye, of a wandering fear in the dimension of why. Silver moon footprints condensed and glistened with dew, as if I cried my wannabe moonlit face on the ground, but instead to squeeze on a balloon with your feet, the rubber bulging out from the sides until pop bang! Bursting out the light within. You felt the blast upon your cheeks. And then you cried. But something else watches over the boy. Watches his facial expressions as if paranoid satellite eyes fix to the skies. Where they eye spy with their little eyes. Something beginning with V. What world shall he tidy? The world where he can touch and smell? Or the computerised room of a mind installation? Where, if his computer gets a virus, then he does too. Facebook of a self-face, of what we must face. Selfie book on how we must look. Swimming around in a net of ideal words of an old being. Oh humanoid, unzip your face like the 1983 series V, which stated, the invasion shall not be televised. 
as they then zip up their face. Suddenly, it is a small commodity, a durability in a smooth surface. Its movement of a wobble and jolly talking, its cuteness is sick, though it is an instant fan with the conditioned children. As the alien widens its eyes, with a white dot in the middle of each eye, as if through a child's toy, but yet an adult content. As it stares into your eyes to a death of a memory. This anthropomorphism of using a female's voice, as inherent, a linear approach. From the speed of the fiber optics that reflect dictomase, of the dialectal difference between two lights, as they both give comfort. This primal point to confer with prudence, to be a source of all knowledge. Well, thank you. That's the first part. Um, and I'll bring you the second part.